what we want to do next is we want to be able to display the time both in our UI and our 3D progress bar here. So what we're going to do is we are going to, let's do the UI first. So let's jump back over to our world space video script. Now, since we want to interact with UI, we're going to need to add the using unity engine.ui namespace, right? And then we're going to add a whole bunch of public text fields. So we're going to add a public text called current minutes, a public text called current seconds, a public text called uh, total minutes, and a public text called total seconds, right? So these are all going to allow us to reference these UI elements. So here is the canvas. Now notice this is a world space UI. It uh, exists in 3D space, right? Uh, it's not an overlay. So the render mode for the canvas is set to world space. Basically to make the tiny short version of making world space UI is set it to world space, make the scale really, really small. You see here it's 0 0.0033. Um, and then position it uh, using the rec transform wherever you want it in the world. I then have two holder objects, one for total time. Notice that I've separated the minutes and the seconds into two objects, right? So that we can uh, update them independently and not have to do a bunch of string operations, which are going to allocate and cause garbage collection, right? So this is kind of good practice for UI is just make separate elements for separate things, for separate values, and then you won't have to do a bunch of string addition. So, or string concatenation is actually the word that I'm looking for. So, okay, so let's do the, what should we do first? Let's do the current time first. So we're going to add a, and this doesn't need to be public, does it? This can be a private function. The returns void called set current time UI. And what this is going to do is just display the time in minutes and seconds where we are in our clip, right? While we're playing our clip. And so what we're going to do is we need a string for the minutes. And that's going to be equal to mathf.floor. So we're going to round down and we're going to round the value that we're going to round is video player dot time, right? So this is the time in seconds. So we're going to take this and we're going to divide it by 60 to get the minute value rounded down and cast it to an integer, right? So that's what math F floor is doing for us. It's rounding down the number of seconds divided by 60 to get our minutes value. Then we're going to call the two string function. Whoops, pass in this to specify the format. And then we're going to do the same thing effectively for seconds. But in this case, it's just going to be, we're going to cast it to an int. It's going to be video player dot time. But in this case, instead of using division, we're going to use modulo 60, right? Because we're only we're not interested in the total number of seconds. We're only interested in the number of seconds above the current minute, right? So again, we're going to use the modulo operator and we're going to convert to string. Again, we're going to use the same format. Oh, come on. Uh, and then all we need to do is just set current minutes dot text to equal minutes and current seconds dot text to equal seconds. Current time is going to be set an update. And what we could do is say if video player dot is playing, we'll update the current time. And we need to set the references to our UI elements. So let's drag in total minutes, total seconds, current minutes, current seconds. There we go. Let's try it. 
now play. There we go. All right, good. So that's counting our seconds, right? And now let's set up the total. Okay. So here, this is actually going to be like really, really similar and actually reuse a lot of the same code. So in fact, I'm going to be lazy and just copy this, paste it. And then this should just be instead of video player dot time, it's going to be video player dot clip dot length, right? So we're going to get the length of the clip and get the minutes from that and video player dot clip dot length here as well. Here, this will be total minutes and total seconds. And of course, we need to change the name of the function to be set total time UI, right? So basically exactly the same, except now we're displaying video player dot clip dot length, the length of the currently loaded clip and updating the other UI elements. That's going to be called here after we start playing, and it's going to be called here after we set the clip. After we change clips, we're going to update the total, and after we start playing, we're going to update the total. Okay, save. Great. So now I hit play. That's started, right? And then hit next. Very good. So it's displaying the correct length. It's reset and is uh, displaying the correct time in seconds. So very excellent, right? Quite simple and straightforward, um, but useful nonetheless. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do, and we'll do this um, in the last video, is we're going to set up our playhead, and we're also going to make sure that our texture clears before the game starts. So we'll do that next. Oh, and the function name, sorry. Yes, set current. So again, we're gonna use our uh, F2, add an R, hit okay, and then that'll change the name of the function and change it here and update. Sorry about that typo, save. Thanks, uh, Oscar Russo.